All right, bros. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Or actually something I've done before but haven't done in a while. I'm going to quickly, quickly in, you know, quotation marks, roll up a character for Other Dust. Other Dust is an OSR game set on a post-apocalyptic Earth in the year, I think, 2837. Everything's gone to crap, mutants and all that sort of thing. So uh, if you play Fallout, it's kind of in that scheme. It's uh, also comparable to like Gamma World, except it takes itself a bit more seriously than Gamma World. But anyway, I've got my pen. I've got my dice. I've got my piece of paper because you really don't need much paper. To do this, just a little sheet of paper is enough. So I won't worry about name. And I don't know that race is really an issue here. I think you're just human. Maybe you can be a mutant. I don't know. So, so attributes are the standard OSR attributes in the OSR uh, uh, order. Strength, intelligence, wisdom, dex, con, and charisma. Now, I know in later editions, they put all the physical ones together and all of the, uh, I guess, non-physical ones together. And charisma, I mean, I, that could be either or, I guess. Uh, but this is how it used to be. I don't think it matters. You could pretty much whatever. Now, this game rolls on straight three dice six. Uh, the minimum penalty or the maximum penalty you can ever get is a minus two, and the maximum bonus you can get, ever get is a plus two. Most characters will be lucky to have a plus one in an attribute. The majority of your attributes will be zero. There are rules where. Um, Basically, if your character really sucks, you have no advantages at all and just all penalties everywhere. You're allowed to reroll. But otherwise, you're, you're strongly encouraged to just stick it out. I mean, the reality is your character will probably die anyway, so you might as well play it. So let's do it. I wish I could show you what I was rolling, but I've got two, two, and a six. So strength of 10, that will be... Just average, so no bonus. Intelligence of eight. Is that a penalty? I don't believe it is, actually. Uh, yeah, eight. No penalty or bonus. Eight to 13 is just average. All right, so I've got another eight in wisdom. So he's not, you know, he's just low average. Okay, ooh, nice. Uh, 14 in what though? 14 dex. Well, dex is always good. So. 14 will give me a plus one. 14, 15, 16, 17 are all just plus one. Okay, con of 13. Damn it. Okay, so still plus zero. I saw the six and I was thinking, yeah, we got it now. All right, nine charisma. So this character has all plus zeros and a plus one dex. Should I play? Mm, should, yeah, of course. I mean, people, I mean, this this modern fascination with trying to have characters that have all these bonuses and everything. Um, come on, man. You don't, you don't need bonuses to make a good character. As a matter of fact, sometimes flawed characters are the best, most interesting, most fun play characters. Um, I had a friend, uh, he actually made a character. This character sucked. God, he had like penalties and everything, but his intelligence was like 15. And I, I told him, this is AD&D. And I'm like, hey, man, that character really sucks. You've got like a plus two in intelligence and all of your penalties combined are like, you know, minus seven. You know, the guy had a constitution of five and all this. And... Uh, Boy, he, he manned up, though. He's like, nope, playing it. And he did, and he somehow survived. I don't know if that character ever died. Uh, also, he chose to play a mage, so it was like, ooh, crank that. I mean, he's playing, playing AD&D on nightmare setting difficulty. You know, a mage with a negative two to hit points. Rolled. This is like, ugh, jeez. 
All right, we got a bunch of backgrounds here, and these backgrounds determine what skill you're going to be. Um, I guess I could go through all of them. Let's see, we've got a adventuring wastelander. So, you know, that's your guy that roams about. Your bandit, you know. City dweller, you live in the ruins of the cities. Elder, uh, not all elders are old. All right, so you're like a leader, an entertainer, a hunter, a noble, nomads who ride across the radioactive plains, an outcast, banished from your people. All right, podborn. All right, these are people who uh, are newly awakened from cold sleep pods. Oh, that's neat. So these are people who have been in cold sleep since the de devastation and are just now waking up. A priest. Well, you could be a choose between a tribal elder and a mom, a pastor, a priest, scavenger, trader, tribal warrior, or wanderer. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to go with the Yeesh. Such a hard... I'll go with Wanderer. <sighs> I mean, it says here, a few brave souls wander from or travel from enclave to enclave, navigating the perils of the wasteland, negotiating with distressful natives. Wanderers rarely manage to grow old, but they do a great deal of living before being eaten by a mutant or cannibal. All right, so Wanderer it is. So noting that down in my background. And that gives me skills in culture, traveler, navigation, persuade, and survival all at one. So persuade. <laughs> or actually not at one at zero. So navigation. So you get all these skills at zero, if I read that correctly. Did I read that correctly? Yeah. Skills are measured in levels ranging from zero to five or higher for greatest practitioners. Each skill listed in a background package is gained at zero. Okay. So, and then we, next in the book, we've got a little skill list. So let's see what we got. Final list coming. So just going through, you know, it's typical of any role-playing game you would, you've would you ever played. So, uh, let's see. Culture is numerous specialties, um, but I took Traveler instead because I think it's you pick one or the other on that one. Pretty sure. Uh, let me double check. <laughs> No, culture and the sub-skill is traveler. Okay. So this skill can only be taken at zero and cannot be raised. It is a substitute for any other enclave's culture skill, however, and represents a casual basic knowledge of many different settlements. The skill is useless for enclaves that have been completely cut off from contact. Traveler skill grants no lingui linguistic proficiency. So, okay. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, all right, so we've got that. So then now what? How skill checks work, all right. Skill level zero represents being trained, but not necessarily a professional. Okay. Right. So choosing a character class, and we've got four classes. We've got the scrounger, experts at finding and salvaging the relics of the old Terra. I kind of like that idea. The Slayer, okay, you excel at bloody work. The Speaker and the Survivor. So, Scrounger or Survivor. Survivor keeps going where others lie down and die. 
I'm going to choose Survivor. So, so I'm a Wanderer and a Survivor. So I'm seeing this concept almost as like Eli from Book of Eli. All right. So the Survivor skill. Okay. Teachers who bring the arts of to the internet, the survivor skill aids not only his or her survival, but also sustain those who rely on their wisdom, her wisdom, their four classes. Okay. okay, and then you can choose starting mutations. As a starting character, you may spend up to three points on the mutation charts. With each point buying one mutation, then rolling for hit points. Okay. So maximum hit points is one die six and add your con modifier. Characters of the survivor class add an additional two points. Okay, I rolled a three, but I'm a survivor. So my hit points are five. Because I do not have a con bonus. Then choosing languages, I'll wait for that. Okay, so first off, let's go to classes. Classes are done as these kind of uh, packages. Or packages. Um, well, you can see here, I'll kind of show you, tells you what you get. So, uh, as a survivor, it's your job to be the last hero standing. I kind of like that idea. So, at level one through three, I get an attack bonus of plus one. So, attack bonus is at plus one. And my saving throws, which are physical effects, mental effects, evasion, tech, and luck, are, let's see, 12, 12, 14, 14, 13, 12, 12, 14, 14. 14 and 13. I don't know if that's good or not. I need 2,000 points to go on to the next level. My prime attribute is intelligence or constitution. So I probably won't be getting any kind of XP bonus since I don't have either of those. But class ability, I am hard to kill. That's true, actually. I've had numerous instances where people were actively trying to kill me and didn't work. First time you're reduced to zero hit points in a day, you immediately gain one, regain one hit point for each experience level you possess. Optionally, you may allow yourself to fall, fall unconscious from the injury, in which case you will appear dead, but will awaken 10 minutes later with one hit point. This ability does not work against injuries that a human could not possibly survive. Okay, so, um, oh, and there's training packages. So, hard to kill. Put that down on my little piece. See, the, the great thing about most OSR things is you can literally make a character like that. Okay. All right, so now I pick a survivor training package. And that's the adventuring survivor, the stranger with no name. I kind of like that because I'm a huge Clint Eastwood fan. Wild man, teacher, the family man or woman. Kind of bothers me that they have to put family man slash family woman. It's like, come on, you know. I suppose it's better to put family person though. So whatever. Last of the breed. But you know what? Stranger with no name will be the package I choose.
Okay, yeah. Some survivors are just perpetually passing through, moving through the isolated towns and villages of the New World without leaving a trace behind them. Could be they're looking for something or looking to stay clear of something that follows. These strangers rarely make much impression on others, but precious will seems able to keep them from moving where they will. All right, skills. Uh, culture traveler, I've already got that. Navigation, I've already got. Stealth, I don't have, though. So let's see, combat any. I'm going to leave that until I figure out what kind of weapons I have. Stealth. All right, stealth could be good. Survival. A lot of these I already have. And vehicle. Nice. Okay, so. All right. I'm going to have to read up on something real quick. She's in character. Oh, look at this. I'm getting ready to rip myself off. Add a discretion. I discretion, yes, if that's a word. Replace one of your character's prime requisites with a 14 to reflect natural aptitude. So that friggin... Oh, that's not really... I mean, so my con of 13 is going to go up. Actually, wait, though. Is it one of my... Uh, intelligence is the other prone. And my intelligence is only an 8. So, re I mean, I don't know if this is min-maxing, but rather than make a four, uh, 13 into a 14, I would much rather make a 8 into a 14. It gives me a plus 1 to my intelligence, and therefore... Uh, I may be able to gain a, uh, okay. Once you pick a class, choose a training package, which I chose. Uh, each skill listed in the training package, package gained at zero. If you already have the skill, then skill becomes level one. All right. So nice, nice. So just like starts without number, but I had to re reread that bit. This is from what I understand based on the actual original version starts without number, and we play the revised. So that means that my culture traveler is now level one. Uh, navigation goes to level one. Survival goes to level one. So that's good, actually. I got got some good skills out of that. All right, now starting equipment. All right, so it says here I get to start the game with a knife. One selection from the starting weapon table. One suit of armor of a type commonly available within a home enclave, a crude backpacker sack, and one die six plus two rations of clean food and water. So let's roll that die six for my clean food and water. Six, nice. So eight days of rations. So of course the best roll I get is for food. Okay, and you may make up to six rolls on the random starting equipment list to reflect the belongings your characters manage to barter, fabricate, steal, or take from the dead bodies of your enemies. Okay, so starting weaponry. We've got a salvaged laser pistol, a hand forged revolver, a breech loading rifle. Okay. All right. Obviously, since I chose to be a survivor and my pack is stranger with no name, I have to take a revolver. So, I mean, you almost, I mean, I have to. 
So this character is starting to come into to focus. You know, it's the Wildlands, Mad Max kind of thing. Maybe with, you know, throw in a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the anime Trigun, but this guy roams about town to town doing whatever he does, relying on his steady big iron to handle business. So I've got my, my knife. Now, what kind of armor can I choose? Old tear and clothing, which would give me an armor class of seven. Hide armor, scrap, mail armor, or shield. I'm going to go with the old Terran art, uh, cloth, clothing. Uh, you know, not the best I could start with. But with my dex bonus, that gives me an arm class of six. Now, this game is using a um, backup system. So when you hear arm class six, if you're like, oh, that's terrible. It, it would actually be the equivalent of like a 13 in ascending armor class. Um, okay. And then there's this handy dandy percentile chart that I get to roll. I'm going to grab these. I bought these cheap, uh, this box of dice at the Wally World. There's three complete sets. I don't know who makes them. I don't know if they're great dice or anything like that. But you get three full sets of dice, and that includes two ten-siders uh, for like seven bucks or eight bucks. So um, I did it anyway. I mean, even though I love my game science dice, let's try this. So I get six items. What items do I get? A 39 gives me a lantern. That could be useful. And two flasks of oil. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're out camping, a lantern can be a really good thing. 75. A spare set of old Terran clothing. So I've got two of those. And on the sheet, I'm just writing spare set OTC and hoping I'll remember what that means. So number three is going to be Low Light Goggles TL3. Okay, that's actually, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the gear exactly does, uh, determined by tech level, but. Now the theory is you can make a character in this game and then play him in a Stars Without Number camp. And I really see, I don't have no idea or reason why you couldn't. Um, oh, I didn't mark down. Uh, notice I said I have five hit points. Well, my revolver does die eight hit points. Just keep that in mind as far as what the lethality level of this game is. So that's one, two, three. I've got three more rolls. Uh, what in the hell is it? Oh, fire starter. Okay. Yeah. TL4. So that must be really good. Two more rolls. Give me something good. I don't know what it is good. 64. Oh, another D4 plus two rations. So this guy is packing some food. Grab our old D4, our lucky triangle, throw it a four. So I'm rolling great for food. So this guy right now is packing around 14 days, two weeks worth of rations. Like, and I get one more roll. Come on, something good. 14. Um, a blueprint plus two for a TL2 or three item of your choice. Now, I have no idea what that is, but I'm assuming it is something that would allow me to build something. Uh, like at a future date in game. A 
All right, so you can only carry a number of items that are equal to items of encumbrance. And I have tw 20 rounds I start with. I wish I could have rolled more of that, but I did not. Mm -hmm. And it, it looks like you can carry a number of items equal to half of your strength. Uh, ready for immediate use on belts and holsters and sheath. Otherwise available for to be instantly ready and the rest they have to carry up to your strength in items packed away in backpacks. So uh, my character's strength is 10 and it looks like, uh, all right, the lantern is three and everything else I have is one. So that's going to three, four, five, six, seven. Well, okay, rations. One per three. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine encumbrance. And then one, two, three, four. So I have 13 in encumbrance. And I can carry half of it on my person and up to my full in a backpack. So if I'm understanding that correctly, I'm doing pretty good. The old tear in clothing actually is no encumbrance. So I'm actually counting too much. I'm actually at 12. Okay. Okay. Every week. Okay. When they scream. Okay. Originally in town, the crazy perversions. For some of today, mutants are known to the names of mutants are made of chain. Okay. Every character may spend up to three points on mutations during character generation. Points not spent on mutations may be used to boost their ability modifiers. Okay, well, I'm going to skip the mutation thing. I don't want my character to be a mutant. So let's just get on past all that. Right. Skill checks and all that. That's all right. So it keeps talking about these points, but I'm where do I find them? Okay. System strain. Okay. All right. Extra body parts. Don't need any of those. Okay, skill checks it was life isn't certain. All right. right. So it's gotta be up here, right? Because I think other than spending these points, I'm done. Uh, which if I am, that would be pretty good. Okay. All right here, so you can spend three points on to make rolls on mutation. Optionally, you may spend one or more points to improve your attribute modifiers. This does not change the underlying attribute, but simply raises the modifier by one point. Thus, if your strength were 10, you could add a point to its modifier to give yourself a plus one strength modifier, despite still having a strength of 10. A giving attributes modifier can be raised once only, and it cannot be raised above plus two. All right, but that's what I'm going to do. So that means uh, Khan is going to get a uh, plus two, and Dex will be a plus two. And that means my armor class will actually be a five, and my hit points will be a seven. So now I've got a tough guy, and he's pretty quick. All right, and I'm a professional at a few things. And for under combat, the skill combat, I went ahead and uh, I'm going to specialize with my pistola. So that's right. My guy's going to. Uh, well, yeah, I'm being, a, I'm being a gunslinger. That's what it is. So projectile weapons, mechanically powered weapons such as crossbows, pistols. Yep. So let's go ahead and put gun combat. All right. And the character is done. 
So again, this is Other Dust, uh, published by Sign Nomine Publishing, written by, I believe, the same guy who wrote Stars Without Number, Kevin Crawford. And let's talk about my character now. Uh, envisioning this guy, he's got his old earth type clothing, maybe dressed up like a Mad Max. Maybe he's got like the leather jacket and the leather pants or whatever. Probably got a hat on of some sort, definitely a duster. I'm thinking reminiscent of a, maybe a cavalry officer from the American Civil War or something. Uh, he's got going to have his long coat on. Uh, I would probably go with gray long coat, even though the, the temptation to go with a brown coat and be like Malcolm Reynolds is there. Uh, so he's got his trusty big iron six shooter on his hip, 20 rounds of ammunition on a bandolier. And uh, in his backpack, he's got a spare set of clothes. Maybe the, his spare set of clothes aren't all like rough and leather, you know, travel clothes. Maybe there's something nice, a nice shirt, a nice pair of slacks, you know. Uh, low light goggles, his fire starter, a bunch of rations. Um, let's steal an idea from Mad Max and say he's carrying with him a couple of canteens of water and 14 cans of dog food. So there you go. He's got a backpack full of dog food. Um, and then he's got the blueprints to build some item as yet to be determined. But tech level two or three means it's obviously, you know, of, of at least modern, our modern level technology. So maybe he's got a blueprint on how to build a car engine or something or an electric motor. You know, I could build myself a car and just start, you know, roaming up and down the highways of the shattered earth. Um even though his attributes don't reflect it, he's actually very agile because plus two is the biggest bonus you can get in this game, uh, as far as I know. Just like in uh, Stars Without Number, unless you start, you know, adding a bunch of cyberware. Um, he's tough as hell. So tough that you, you can shoot him and you think he's dead and he'll come back. Uh, he's good at survival. He's good at finding his way through the woods. He's good at communicating with various different settlements, and uh, he can be sneaky. So yeah, I like this character. I would play this character. This character is awesome. I'm going to end the video there. Uh, if you have any other thoughts, concerns, or questions about Other Dust, which you can get on PDF or uh, as I did the book, I actually bought the book and the PDF was free with it, I think. Um, I prefer hard copies when I can. Um, just let me know. Uh, the, the Again, to reiterate what I said in the beginning, the premise of this is to not drop it on the floor. No. The premise of this game is you're a survivor in the future of an Earth that has been totally wrecked. Uh, mutation, radiation, just all the terrible stuff. Uh, just like Gamma World, if you ever played Gamma World, except this game goes out of its way to actually make it kind of make sense. It is not a wacky game like Gamma World. This is not a game where you can be attacked by spider cows and, uh, you know, all that weird stuff, especially the Gamma World that was based on 4th uh, Edition D&D. This game is a more serious game. There are cannibals and mutants and crazy robots in the runs who do want to peel your face off and wear it. So, also, based on just comparing your starting hit points with weapon damage, um, a much more lethal game. If uh, This is a game that is screaming at you as a player. Mess around and you will find out. So you better be smart and lucky. Um, if the hit point system works like uh, stars without number, when you level up instead of rolling a die six and adding it to your current hit points, you'll actually roll two die six. And if that's greater than your current hit points, then you'll get that. Anyway, I've managed to go 35 minutes on this, this uh, not really a review, more of just me making a character. Um, if you like it, if you don't like it, and comment.
comment and we can talk about it. Uh, so DM Jim out.